SCP Secret Laboratory is a game like no other. The game is built around the main concept of, well, escaping a secret laboratory. You are either tasked with escaping yourself, helping others to escape, or preventing others from escaping. This strong framework allows for some of the most fun and memorable experiences while playing this game, from humor to rage, and most importantly of all, horror. SCPSL, while not feeling like it to many, is meant to be a horror game, which means that its goal is to instill fear within the player. SCPSL does this by having things like a dark atmosphere, terrible monsters, and most importantly of all, jump scares. But it's important to remember what ties all these together, that is, the in-game sounds. It's hard to have a good atmosphere without a good atmospheric track, and it's also likewise hard to have a good jump scare without a loud noise to accompany it. So with the latest update Mimicry out, I thought it would be perfect to cover just how SCPSL crafted its horror through sound, and how it ultimately destroyed it with said sound. Sound effects in SCPSL are one of the most important tools at your disposal at any given time. No matter if you're out of ammo, low on stamina, or need first aid, you can always listen. Sounds can also tell you a lot about your surroundings, from incoming threats to opportunities. The only thing you need when it comes to actually using this tool is the knowledge of each sound and what it actually means. So with this powerful tool, one of the ways that SCPSL creates its fear is by taking this tool away from you. One of the main ways this game does this is by making the sounds harder to hear, and the main way it does that is through the atmospheric tracks. SCPSL's atmospheric tracks are what you'd expect when it comes to environments of this caliber, aka loud drones, ghostly sounds ringing, the whole shebang. But out of all the atmospheric tracks, the only one of major importance is the track Massive Labyrinth. Take a listen. This track is not too different from most others, but what makes it unique is that in order to hear it, you have to be alone for over two minutes. I cannot stress enough that being alone for over two minutes in this game is rare. This isolation will make you much more cautious and much more dependent on listening cues. Meaning that you'll be listening closer, making this track seem extraordinarily loud. The perceived volume of this track will only make listening for cues harder and will put you on edge. This track and others like it are meant to instill fear within the player as they desperately try to listen for anything that can help them all while the atmospheric tracks muddy the waters. A more conventional track horror-wise is a certain stinger by the name of Horror 2 and its subsequent chase music that follows. Playing now. While on the surface it may seem that this simple track is merely meant to make the player jump, it does a whole lot more than just give you a quick fright. The subsequent chase music is loud, just like the atmospheric tracks, which makes it harder to hear important cues, drenching the player in more fear. But to experienced players, this simple stinger is quite a useful tool, because despite the intensity, the track is activated based on line of sight with the SCP, which can give you an early warning as to where an SCP is. There are many more tracks like this in game that appear to be more or less helpful than they really are, such as the Cassie announcements and the Chaos Insurgency theme. But there are more ways to create fear than just making it difficult to hear the cues. You could also tamper with the cues themselves. I'm of course talking about red herrings. Auditory red herrings are sounds that mislead the listener into thinking the meaning of the sound to something other than what it actually is if that makes sense. One clear example of this is with the footsteps of humans and the footsteps of SCP-049. Both of them sound almost identical to each other, fooling most inexperienced players who can't tell the difference. See if you can tell. There's also a small chance that a random ambient sound from SCP Containment Breach will play. Experienced players will for the most part ignore these noises, but to someone inexperienced, these can make them fearful as something may or may not have just happened, and they have no idea what. Up to this point, you may think that SCPSL has done a pretty good job when it comes to creating horror in this game through sound design, but how wrong you are. There are two fundamental problems that ruin the horror in this game. The first and less major one is the lack of red herrings. I realize now that I just talked about the red herrings in the game, but other than the ones I mentioned previously, there are no others. This lack of variety makes the ones already in game more easy to identify as red herrings and makes the player ignore them slash understand their true meaning. Now this would happen normally as the player plays the game, but this just expedites that process. But this lack of red herrings pales in comparison to the main thing that completely destroys any semblance of horror in the sound design. The proximity voice chat. 
Horror games have been able to do proximity voice chat successfully in the past. Take Phasmophobia and In Silence. Where these games differ from SCPSL is that these games mess with proximity voice chat in some way. Phasmophobia makes voice chat unreliable, and In Silence makes it dangerous, while SCPSL really does nothing to hinder your ability to speak. Not only that, but in those games there's only around a handful of people to talk to, but in SCPSL, you're presented with a group of 20 plus players. Proximity voice chat of this nature removes that feeling of isolation and subsequently removes that terror from most situations. If there's another player to talk to, then you won't hear the ambience and you won't notice the red herrings. This is why this game's horror thrives when you're all alone and fearing what's around every corner. This fear is only further shattered by the fact that the intercom exists, which allows a person to basically broadcast a message over the whole facility. More often than not, it's just Joker mic spam, which completely breaks any sense of isolation or immersion that you may have gotten. The breaking of this sense of isolation causes the game to become less horrifying overall, and more often than not when you boot up this game, you will not be scared. But thankfully, there may be a way to bring back some horror to SCP-SL and its sound design, and this is all thanks to the Mimicry update and the new SCP-939. This update completely reworks SCP-939 and gives her a few new abilities, one of those being the namesake of the update, the ability to mimic the voices of your victims. Once you kill a human, their voice gets recorded and then you can go back and play what they just said. Someone's been watching Scruffy. This ability means that you have the potential to trick people into believing that you aren't what you seem. Now with this, you can't even trust the words coming from just around that corner. But the changes just don't stop with that. She also now has the ability to mimic sound effects themselves, from footsteps to guns to even medkits. SCP-939 can mimic it. Most players know and expect that every single cue they hear to mean exactly one thing, but now the chance of death is present with every sound you hear. This chance of SCP-939 tricking them to their own death, I believe, will change the way people listen and think about both cues and their fellow humans, adding just a bit more horror into this horror game. Now, of course, updating a single SCP won't solve the underlying problems that prevent SCP-SL from truly being terrifying, but this is certainly a step in the right direction. We can only hope that Northwood Studios makes the game just that more horrifying in the near future. But hey, if they can turn a simple containment breach spinoff into one of the most popular pieces of SCP media in the community, then I'm sure they can pull it off. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to black out a few rooms for SCP-173. All generators have been successfully engaged. Wait, don't, don't press, press that button. button. Oh, oh, come, come on. on. SCP-079 contained successfully. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Dislike it if you didn't, and any comments or criticisms would be much appreciated. And with that... Alpha ciao!